Welcome to Field Sports Britain. We have a packed programme, but first, what's that noise? Oh yes, it's indignation from the antis. As you may know, Chris Packham is suing us for defamation. We never thought it was about his reputation. He could have sorted that out with a phone call. He's got my number. We reckon it's about the money. First, he wanted £12,000 from us. Then he wanted £50,000. Now his wild justice friends have set up a fundraiser for him and the obviously cash-strapped BBC TV presenter is coining it in. At time of recording, he's reached £65,000 in pledges. What does that buy you in the new forest where he lives? Well, Chris, if you want to get away from your own luxury house, you could head down to BH Boats in Bewley and buy this sexy Italian motor yacht. Or why not purchase this Indian restaurant in nearby sunny Southampton? The estate agent says it makes £5,000 a week and I'm sure it won't lose much if you add a vegan option. Or pop into Winchester to see gunsmith Alex Smith. He could find a nice English side-by-side -side for that price. Chris uses the High Court like a cash point machine. Unfortunately, he stuffed his card into us and it is looking a lot like he wants to cancel us to stop us doing stories about the general licences, game shooting and failures at the RSPB and others. If you reckon our work is useful and you want to keep it going, please join the Field Sports Nation. It has 2,000 supporters. They pay a fiver a month via YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, or our website, links below. They get goodies in return. And right now they're helping us mount our fight back against Chris and his celebrity friends. More on the case itself later in the show. First up, something Chris says he actually supports, though most of his friends and supporters do not. It's fast food in the countryside as Kayak Brin shoots a fallow for the pot. Hunting big game can be slow and steady or fast and furious. This morning, it's the latter. I'm just struggling to get this back on. It's quite light, isn't it? It's really light, yeah. There's, um, there's no mod on this, obviously. So no, it's... You... <laughs> Daylight. It's actually quite light, I'm saying. I think I meant the rifle at light. No, no, no. <laughs> Pop that on there like Kai that. needs venison for his game cooking business well, and wants to well show us a no frills burger recipe from the venison he's already taken off this ground. We've got our timing's a bit wrong, it's a bit light, isn't it? Yeah, I've been out in about two weeks really because uh, it's been so busy with work and other things that life gets in the way, doesn't it? But it's coming towards the end of the season, so the does um, at the end of the month uh, they'll be out of season, so really try and press on for them now to try and get those numbers down. Bucks too, maybe some young bucks. There's plenty in this area. I've seen a lot of deer around at the moment. So um, in fact, we're just in a group about 400 yards in the other field, trying to faff around and get everything ready. <laughs> so hopefully uh, they'll still be there. The other thing is dog walkers. If you don't get on it quick, they're going to push them along. So um, we best get going. Kai is a thermal devotee. In his eyes, he is just being efficient. Time is money, and a thermal doesn't guarantee success. They're still there. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick to the side here on the right. It's a perfect little vantage point in that little spinny of woodland there. So we go in there, and then hopefully the wind won't turn too much. That's the problem. I can feel the side of my face. It's going down that way, but they're just straight ahead. So let's try and get it on them. Second from the front, your head eating is it stretching out now? That's a good start, isn't it? 
really nice group of deer there actually, um, really nice. And uh, this moved over to the right. I would have taken another one, but all I could see was the white one and there's not many white ones. And we like, like I said before, I like to keep them around for two reasons. The reason number one would be because the locals like them. So I keep them happy, don't upset them. Reason number two, is they're quite easy to spot the rest of the herd as well. So when I was driving this morning, I could see little flecks of white. I could see that there was a group there and that's the white one helps. So I'm trying to locate it now. So obviously it might've been here and then, yes, yeah, there, right underneath there. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Even with, <laughs> it's, it's 10 yards away from us. Even with the thermal sometimes, like if it goes, if it falls in a dip, you can't see it, but it's like literally, yeah, 10 yards in front of us. Not too bad at all. You've been using that rifle quite a bit then, you've been to Ireland, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. So this was the first invite I had down in um, Killarney and what absolute stunning part of the world. Like if you haven't been, you really need to go. And I went with the guys from the Lemons' Distillery and the new distillery, North Wales uh, Gin Distillery, absolutely fantastic gin i've sampled maybe a couple of <laughs> bottles already since i got back gin's normally a summer drink for me but um in the evening pushing I've been... through, are you pushing through to a... well yeah you know a little bit of market research and stuff and see what <laughs> recipes i can do it's all part of it isn't it nice young male good one to take we say we're going to take some of the young males or some of the does and then yeah i mean look at that exactly exactly with a where I was aiming at that rifle, so very, very pleased with that. That's going to make exceptional eating as well. So I'll dress this one out, get it in the truck, and then um, back in the larder. I got this uh, custom Mark Sabrowski knife, perfect size for doing deer. I'll put my finger on the edge for when I'm doing the growlicking. I don't like a knife too big when I'm out deer stalking. Uh, you know, size isn't everything. <laughs> While cleaning the young buck, an inquisitive dog walker asks what we're up to. We didn't feel it appropriate to film it, but Kai did his best to build bridges with friendly chat and with the offer of some free venison next time he's passing. As hunters, we are extremely fortunate to be able to do what we do. And, and I think a big part of that for us is we have to share that with people. There's houses around on the farm here that they ask me what I'm doing and I'll explain to them the full story. And then I say, look, I'll, I'll bring some venison around for you to try. Is that so you don't forget your name? Yeah, in big silver letters. I got this at Black Deer Festival last year, so I did a chef's demo on the, on the big stage. A lot of these people come from London, other places, but the venison sales outsold the lamb. It was sponsored by Yeti, and I got this really nice gift. So yeah, I'm not going to forget my name now. <laughs> it's time to turn a no-frills fallow stalk into that no-frills burger. This recipe is so, I can't, I can't tell you how simple this is. Salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, that's it. No frills, but incredibly tasty. So all I'm gonna do is get my mints, add some black pepper. Now this just enhances the, the, the flavor of the venison. So there's nothing in there that's gonna mask the flavor of the venison. It's so mild fallow anyway, that it's, a lot of people think they're eating very lean beef. A little glug of olive oil. And that's it. Through the mincer once, salt, pepper, and that is it. What I'm gonna do then is just put them into balls the size of um <laughs> There's always innuendos when we're doing these type of things. Well you just finish your sentence, balls the size of I was thinking it's not a squash ball, it's not a tennis ball. But the, I'm, I'm trying to think what it is. But I, I was trying to think at the same time, it's like <laughs> what could I relate it to? I mean, what what could I, I <laughs> Balls the no, size I, of bullocks. It's between a squash ball and a. I yeah. Don't yeah. Ball, maybe. Well, there we go. <laughs> so, this is 500 grams, right? So, we can probably get probably like four, four burgers out of that easy. So, I'm just uh, heating up the pan now. These are really good pan. These are Netherton Foundry, handmade in Shropshire. I can use them on the fire as well. They're thin, spun iron pans. They're absolutely gorgeous. And for the price, they're very reasonable. What is reasonable for a handmade pan? 60, 70 quid a pan. I love cast iron. I've got cast iron lodge pans over there. But these are kind of almost the same, but thinner and lighter, easier on the wrists. So 
Now I like to taste the buns, it gives it extra bit of texture, so when you put in your sauce on as well, it sits on it, it doesn't absorb into the bun. So you've got to crisp the top, put it on, and it just sits nicely on the burger. The trick is with these burgers, the reason why they work is because it's going to be thin, right? So if you did it thick, because it hasn't got much fat content in there, like pork fat or anything else like that, then that would dry out if it was thicker. But with these, literally, like that, not perfectly round, doesn't matter, we're not looking for perfection. Um, I think the term is rustic, isn't it? So, pop that on there like that. And not only that, this is like so quick as well. So these have literally been on there for a couple of minutes now, so I'm going to just turn that over. And then I'm going to just put some pancetta over it. So you can use bacon, you can use ham. So it's not pretty, literally just, just place it over there. And then this is a trick. So gal does, it melts really, really well. So you can get your, your kind of nice cheap burger cheese. It's all got place, is delicious. But gouda, something a bit richer and a bit kind of, um, a bit more special, just place the gouda on there. Now one thing I haven't got is a lid for this, but I'll use my lodge lid just to steam that for about a minute. And what that's gonna do then, it's gonna create some steam and it's gonna melt the cheese over the pancetta. Are you drooling yet? <laughs> I can see you. I've been drooling since the, since <laughs> left the field. Now this is probably the most complicated part, but this is not necessary. This is a very easy way of making a really good quality burger sauce um, from scratch. You can skip this, you can put ketchup, you can put mustard or whatever, but this is the bit that, you know, literally it's got more ingredients than anything else. So I'm going to go for mayonnaise. So I would say two thirds mayonnaise, a third ketchup. Um, a little splash of lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce, a bit of pepper, and a little pinch of paprika. And lastly, what I like to put in this is just some, you can use Dijon, you can use um, whole grain, you can use any type of mustard if you want something a bit more pokey, use um, English, but this is French is American mustard. It's mild, I'm not a massive fan of mustard myself, so it works quite well for me. Mix that in. So you can see that cheese has melted beautifully on these burgers. Look at that. Oh my god. You can go to any of these kind of fine dining, fancy burger restaurants if you've got a five guys, you've got a Byron or but these will just be on par, I promise you. Shall we do the half? There we go. And you just look at that. Honestly, it is unreal, so I need to try this. You could not tell that was venison from beef. Excuse me. For more information about Kai's cooking, go to gameandflames.com and for more about the Bergara Crest, go to ruag.co.uk. Thank you, Kai. Later in the show, David brings you the news on the new stump and James Marchington has the best hunting and shooting videos in hunting YouTube. Over on Field Sports Extra, a prize draw this week is for five pairs of tickets to the Stalking Show, which takes place at Staffordshire County Showground on the 15th and 16th of April 2023. And we will be there on the Saturday. Link to that below too. Next, from venison burgers to silly burgers, it is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A Danish hunter has shot a UK roebuck, which could break a 40-year-old world record. Mikkel Vendelin Olsen shot the animal in Hampshire. The south of England is well known for producing roebucks with antlers above average size and weight and has had several bucks that have matched or even outscored the current world record but were disqualified from contention by the CIC due to abnormal traits. However, this buck looks set to beat the current world record holder by a large margin. If so, it will take the title from a buck shot in 1982 in Sweden. Field sports groups have raised the alarm over new draft legislation on grass moor management by the Scottish Government. The Scottish Government has published the Wildlife Management and Muirburn Scotland Bill, 
Basque, the Countryside Alliance and Scottish Land Estates have condemned it. Despite the benefits to nature of grouse shooting in Muirburn, the bill aims to introduce licensing for land use for grouse shooting, licensing for Muirburn and licensing and training requirements for some types of wildlife traps. There's a real danger of um, finance into the economy being lost or, or at least significantly reduced um, and also the management techniques and the, the, the management and conservation efforts that have gone into decades and, and if, uh, hundreds of years of management of, uh, of moors could really be at risk if regulations are, are tightened too much, which it appears that they are going to be. The British Deer Society says that red deer being singled out as being the main culprits for spreading Lyme disease. Rising numbers of Lyme disease cases on South Uist led to a petition to eradicate all 900 deer on the island. Although dismissed in a recent vote, the BDS says it is worried that deer are being made out to be the villain of the peace and are going to end up being treated as vermin. The Scottish Government has approved a licence for the release of captive bred Scottish wildcats. After years of wrangling about their genetic purity, the wildcats will now be released in the Cairngorms, the UK's largest national park, in June. The Saving Wildcats project says it will be the first conservation translocation of wildcats in Britain. It wants to release up to 20 wildcats a year to boost the existing population there. A huntsman has confronted Sab, suspected of spraying citronella to confuse hounds out hunting. Gary Thorpe filmed the antis who were distressing the hounds taking part in lawful trail hunting with the East Essex hunt. The sabs were laying false trails in woodland. Gary says everyone could smell citronella and it is harmful for animals if it gets on their skin. The Countryside Alliance says that sabs can also be trying to encourage the dogs to chase live animals so they can collect false evidence. The danger here is that of course those hounds could go off onto roads somewhere where they weren't intended to go. But also there's another danger as well which is that that sort of evidence, if you want to call it that, can be used in Parliament to argue that, that hunting the trail is a, a smokescreen for hunting a live uh, quarry uh, and therefore adds to the campaign to tighten the Hunting Act even further, as exactly what they've done in uh, Scotland just recently. Police have arrested a man in connection with five birds of prey found dead in Suffolk. Police launched an investigation in January after the birds were found near a woodland car park near Thetford. X-rays established all five birds had been shot. A £13,000 reward was set up for information which could lead to the arrest and conviction of those responsible. Questions remain over the circumstances of the crime, especially whether the birds were captive as an implanted tail feather suggests. Salmon are to get trees in Staffordshire to help them spawn. The Trent Rivers Trust is planting thousands of saplings along the River Dove to reduce erosion and slow the flow of water. Salmon returned to the river in the 1990s after a 70-year gap. The Trent Rivers Trust says the project will provide cover for the fish, help stabilise the riverbank and add woody material to the river over the longer term. The supermarket Aldi and a Yorkshire pub were among those scooping honours at the Eat Game Awards 2023. TV presenter Adam Henson hosted the event in London. Aldi won the Best Large Game Retailer Award. Deerbox Limited picked up the Best Small Game Retailer honour. The Clarendon Inn in Hebden was named Champion of Champions. The Clarendon chef and owner Lionel Strubb and head chef Matt Hind were joint finalists in the Best Game Chef category of this year's awards, with the pub also making the final three in the Best Restaurant category. The awards mark the culmination of a national search to find businesses and individuals championing the use of British Wild Game. The public cast more than 11,000 votes, with the shortlist in each category going to review by a panel of judges. An American state is planning to enshrine the right to hunt and shoot in the state's constitution. Legislators in Florida have begun a proposed constitutional amendment that says, in part, hunting and fishing shall be preserved forever as a public right and preferred means of responsibly managing and controlling fish and wildlife. If approved, the vote will go on the November 2024 ballot. Thanks to James Schneider for the story, and there's more from James later in the show. And finally, a cocky grouse is king of the castle, leaving its keeper a dirty rascal. The Yorkshire Dales Moreland Group shared footage of the bird on Facebook. It proved so popular that it shared a second film of the bird giving a gamekeeper a run for his money to determine who is in charge of the moor. You are now to date with Fieldsports Channel News. 
Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. Thank you, David. Now, I said I would update you on the case. Chris Packham, solicitor, lead A. They are the ones in trouble over chasing claims against our troops in Iraq. Sent Chris's claim to us. You can read up to that point on our website, link below. After that, it gets a bit sub judicate, except to say that we sent back our defence and they sent us what I can only describe as a hysterical outburst. It is mystifying and our blessed legal help who came to us via the Field Sports Nation is trying to work out what it means. As soon as we know, I'll let you know. Next up, there's a new air rifle on the market. Now, I went to the USA last month to help secure funding for our new service, and I took a day off to go fishing. All right. No need to measure him, I just no. wanted to know. <laughs> you can do it in almost every seaport in the world. Check out the local angling pro staff, book a boat, and head into the briny. In Florida, it's bigger and better than most. We are a party of four going out with Captain Josh and looking for a Florida speciality, grouper. We'll catch a whole bunch of mangrove snappers, lane snappers, goliath grouper, probably a few red grouper. Depends on what kind of bottom he puts us on. Uh, I'd like to come home with probably just some snapper and grouper to eat, but then I'd rather get some like big fish, you know, for the camera, of course, and also because big fish are just fun to catch, you know. The fish are big, the weather is gorgeous, and as you head out of the port town of Naples, the real estate is fancy. We're on our way 50 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico, speeding across a beautiful blue sea. Just a minute, where's the lad's hat? Yeah. Right. Go, Chris. Oh. Oh. He gets it back, dignity restored. Our day is dictated by sonar. Captain Josh explains how it works. So uh, we were actually just shy of where I was planning on doing our first drop and I ran over this little mark here. So I marked it on our GPS and uh, turned around to run back over it. Now that we're going slower, we got a better read of it. So that little thin mark is all that, but you can't tell you know, when you're moving really fast, full cruising speed, we're going about 27 knots. Josh turns the boat around and drifts back over the GPS marker, dropping the anchor just short of it, so we hold over the right spot. Josh explains the basic fishing technique. These conventional reels, you'll pull this lever back towards you and keep your thumb on, your, on the spool at all times, so pull that back. Now the only thing stopping it from going down right now is the pressure from my thumb. And you'll let it go all the way down to the bottom. You want to just barely touch it so the, the spool doesn't go all crazy, you end up getting a backlash, a bunch of knots in there. And to set the hook with these, you don't jerk the rod, you just turn the handle. And just like that, you got a fish up. Ah, all right. First fish goes to James. I get this snapper off here. The real prize comes next. It's a grouper. Yeah, he's grocery. Oh, that's a pig. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, nice. Captain. I got to measure him just out of curiosity. <laughs> Right wow, 30. almost 30. Yeah, there's no question that was a keeper. You happy, Chris? I couldn't be happier. That was outstanding. Awesome. After that, the fish come thick and fast. That last one. I buried it, yeah. That rod too, This is a mangrove snapper. He's about half an inch shy, so we'll send him back down. Crank, 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 crank. Swing your rod out away from the boat and, and crank them up. Any idea what it is? Oh, maybe a grouper. It's a, it's a small snapper. There you go. <laughs> Work them. Maybe a Goliath. Work them, man. Work them. You got them. 
That's a grouper. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, can we have some more random fish, please? I don't. You know what? I think it is a bald fish eagle. Eagle do something. I think it's a white tail. It's a white tail. It's a swimming. You know, they do swim, you know. <laughs> Come on, man, get, to, get the tip. That's one angry sea turtle. Yeah. <laughs> James's fish identification is legendary. Now, one thing they do here that I have not seen before is venting. So we just brought this guy up and he's just shy of being a keeper. So we're gonna vent him to send him back down because this water is pretty deep. We're fishing in just about 100 feet of water. So we wanna make sure he kicks down and swims to the bottom all right. This little tool is a spike and you'll see it's hollow so that allows air to escape. So I'm going to go basically right in his armpit here. Just try to make a small, gentle hole. That's the air breathing out of him. He'll be stuck floating on the surface now if we don't do this. So there you go. Kicks right to the bottom. There is one grouper we are missing from our lineup. The famous Florida Goliath grouper. Josh is not confident we will catch one today. He says the best spots are further along the coast. Then Chris gets a proper tug. It's running, isn't it? OK. What, what do you reckon this could be? Could be a shark, could be a cobia, could be a, could be a lot of things. Big, big. Bigger this rod made for it. It took 40 yards of line. No, I got color right now. That's a grouper. It's a frickin' pig. That's what we were looking for. That is amazing. Alright, I don't want to gap him. Love it. Love it. Well done, Chris. Woo. These guys are protected, so we're not going to be able to keep him. He's going to be going back along his way. Uh, they did just open that you can now apply for a lottery tag for a Goliath. But I think it's only 24 to 36 inches you can keep him. So this guy would have been probably just over that. It's also 500 bucks a tag, so. <laughs> and you have to get picked on that lottery. So we are gonna vet this guy, just like that red grouper from before. As you can see, his stomach's all inflated there. Yeah. Not, not poking you. He's tough. <laughs> he, broke the, he broke the venting tool. Did he really? Take two. There he goes. Down. It is time to head back in. Now, there is one wildlife tragedy going on here, the red tide. It's a slick of algae that produces neurotoxins that kill fish. You can see it showing up brownie green in this aerial shot. It is up to 5,000 square miles of pollution that hangs off the coast of Florida and Texas and is caused by agricultural fertiliser. There is no political solution in the near future because right now farming is politically more important to Florida than inshore marine life. Another tragedy here is the hurricane season. Here's the last of the 2022 clean-up. Deadliest storm of the year, Hurricane Ian closed in on Florida's Gulf Coast in September. Don't let that put you off fishing here. It is one of the great Florida experiences. Oh, look at that. I would call this absolutely a successful trip. A fantastic time. And everyone caught outstanding fish, really. I mean, yeah. it's uh, an exceptional. Beautiful day. Great captain. All around winner. We went out with purefl.com. And let me tell you, grouper is delicious. Thanks to James for organising that. Next, the Welsh Government has launched an attack on game shooting and the shooting organisations are rallying the troops to respond. Deborah Hadfield finds out what's going on. Field sports groups say it's the thin end of a wedge that could extend to the rest of the UK. Wales plans to ban, then licence, game shooting. The Welsh Government's Royal Agency, Natural Resources Wales, proposes to issue licences for all game bird release. To start with, it will be a general licensing system for most shoots. Those near to protected sites will have to apply for a specific license if they want to release pheasants or red leg partridges. It's simple. This is the first consultation of its kind on game bird release. And it's being done because there's quite a lot of opposition. In fact, a significant amount of opposition. But we are one million people who engage in this and 
all our voices can be heard for this. And this is the start. We've already seen it happen elsewhere and we will see it happen again after this. NLW says it wants public approval, so it's open to 12-week consultation. Field sports organisations says this fight is about weight of numbers. They want everyone to take part wherever they live. Our views need to be heard and this consultation is not bounded by Wales, it's not bounded by the United Kingdom. And so we have a community, one million of us from the UK, seven million of us across Europe, and as many of those who can take part and whose voices can be heard, will help get our message across. We've seen in the past numbers count and so if we don't get involved, it's dead easy. If you want something banned, you get the passion to get involved. If you don't, sort of, you just sort of say, I'll keep my head in the sand and hopefully things work out. We're seeing over the years, that's not working. So we really do need members and others to engage in this one. Welsh farmer Gareth Wynne-Jones is also a shooter. He's fearful that if people don't push back against the consultation, it will lead to the government damaging a way of life. Another day, another consultation in Wales. 12 week consultation about giving licenses to releasing game birds. Do you know what? As somebody that enjoys shooting, that loves to go and harvest his own food with friends, I don't get many opportunities, you know, to go out with people. And this is one of the things I can do over the winter months and enjoy other people's company of, you know, the same kind of mindset. NRW claims it wants to manage game bird releases. It admits that game shooting provides environmental, social and economic benefits. These gamekeepers are part of our countryside. The money that's generated around this is unreal. Welsh Government doesn't want to be the first. They should be protecting the countryside. They should be protecting these little shoots. That's what we're, we're on. We're on a very, very small syndicate of a few people that go out every two weeks to harvest food that I bring home, I pluck, I skin, and I put in my freezer, and I'm still eating them now, and I will be eating them till the beginning of next season. This is what we do. We hunt and gather. We're farmers, we're country folk. Please don't take another one of our passions away from us. NLW promises it's not about stopping game bird release. We know with what they propose general licences. We know how general licences can be changed every year to their whim. And we know that sort of over a few years you can get mission creep and it could lead to a total ban. There are huge risks to shooting, particularly here in Wales, um, looking at this consultation document. What they're trying to do is to reduce the number of game birds that are put down in Wales, um, whether that's through a general licence or a specific licence for designated landscapes. So what we are looking at perhaps is a slow burn approach to what they would really like to see is the end of game bird shooting here in Wales. And this is why we must respond to this robustly and in numbers. Basque feels the move is an obvious and a necessary restriction on shooting, with a licensing scheme providing NRW and the Welsh Government with an open goal for further restrictions and conditions. A few years ago they banned shooting on their ground across Wales, yet they then refused sort of Covid funding to shooting businesses, which was a legal sort of business to have. So we just think this is another stage. The ministers have stated on numerous occasions they do not support shooting live quarry for leisure purposes. Basque has launched a campaign platform to raise awareness and galvanise the shooting sector to respond in significant numbers. Basque says it's vital for people from outside Wales to also support game shooting. Welsh Government have never just sort of restricted to consultations from Wales. They're quite happy to take sort of people's sort of views from across the world. So we need them to get involved this time. So when they tell me that they do not hear from our people, then I think it's really important. Now is the time for our people, as they call them, to respond to this consultation. We know that Welsh Government play a numbers game to suit them. Go back to when they banned game shooting on public land. They referred to a petition of 11,000 names where signatures had come in from all over the world. Yet they referred to that petition as something that the people of Wales wanted. 
So we really need to knock this up a gear and get plenty of responses in. The links to the BAS campaign and where to respond to the MLW consultation are below. Thanks all who took part in that and please do respond to that consultation. If you do, it means shooting can continue in Wales and this creeping intolerance of the countryside won't reach England, Scotland or Northern Ireland. And that means it might be worth buying a new shotgun. Ian Hodge from Ian Hodge Field Sports pits the best options from Browning and Beretta against each other. These two are the, you know, our bread and butter. Beretta and Browning, our biggest question is, you know, what's better, what's the most popular? For us, it's 50-50. People get quite tribal about these two brands, I mean, Beretta <laughs> and Browning. I mean, if they're coming in for a short shotgun and they choose say the Beretta, do you reckon there'll be a Beretta shooter for life? Is that how it works? Generally, very few people have got both makes. Some have, but generally what they have when they start shooting, they, they stay with. If these are cars, what, what, what make of cars would they be? They're probably uh, a, a good mid-price Audi without going over the top. So if one's a mid-price Audi, the other's a mid-price BMW, is it, is yeah. it like that? Yeah, that, that, that sort of thing. I mean, you can buy more expensive Brown and, and Berettas, like you can buy more expensive BMWs and Audis, but these are good all-rounders. And yeah. With the Beretta, it's, especially this is the Silver Pigeon 1. This is the 525 Browning. The 525 Browning is a little bit chunkier to hold. Um, a little bit, there's a little bit more there. It's not, it's only fractional, but it does feel a bit more. So some people like the more sleeker, um, fractionally lighter Beretta, but then others like someone a bit more there to, to hold. So it's not, it's, it's like what I say all the time, it's what you're comfortable with. I'm, I'm always straight with people. I don't sell a gun to somebody because I want to make a sale. I, I'm always straight with people. There is a two pound price to Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that tells me they are absolutely head to head. Yeah, that, that is one thing that I haven't got to sway people one way or another because they're practically the same, the same price. Um, it, it, people do go on the gun and not on the price then. If they've made their mind up to spend this sort of money, they, at least they haven't got to worry about that. They're not spending 200 pound more on one gun than the other. They can go on how their gun handles and looks and feels for them. On this one, you've got the, the breadth of the scroll engraving, which some people like. Some people like a planer, other people like gold. It, it, again, it's everything different. This is very traditional. The pheasant uh, looks nice. But again, for everybody's different. We get so we've got some guns of other makes that are covered in gold, and oh, that's what they want. They've got to have the gold, and other people want it as plain as possible. So it's a good job we're all different. Thanks, Ian, the Father Christmas of country sports. Now, from kit to the wider world of hunting and shooting, on YouTube, James Marchington brings you Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube with James to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Stuck in the rut is hunting wolves in Idaho. He makes a few rookie mistakes and has the scars to prove it, but ends up with this big white alpha male. These guys are taking long shots on feral goats in New Zealand in very challenging conditions. There's some impressive shooting and plenty of useful advice on reading the wind. Yappy and Weston set themselves a budget turkey hunt challenge, buying all the kit they need as cheaply as possible at Walmart and heading to the woods for the opening day of the season. Rob Heal is on a fly fishing adventure in the fabulous scenery of Northern Ontario, travelling by canoe and camping out in search of pike and wild brook trout. Here's an old one that's doing the rounds again. It shows two hunters struggling to help a bull elk that's stuck in a mud hole. Thanks to Adam Wilde for sending us that one, with the comment that it shows hunters do care about the animals they hunt. Seven-year-old Jamie and her dad made this lovely documentary about the curlew. Lloyd Birch sent it in, saying Jamie is a wonderful young lady who has a massive passion for wildlife in the countryside. David from Predator Protection UK has been getting out of his comfort zone and into the kitchen. Starting with a munchak he's just shot, he goes through the process of butchering and cooking, with a little help from professional chef Zhong. Finally this week, here's one that shows South Africa has the same problem as us, with gangs poaching wildlife not for meat but for commercial gambling. They arrive in large groups with packs of dogs and cause immense damage. That's it for this week, we've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description if you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please visit over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Lots of goodies there. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. Goodbye.